Hi everybody, welcome back once again to the Eastfield Gunroom YouTube channel. Today's review is an absolute cracker. We are going to look at a very special edition of the world's most successful competition gun. Now, 2023 is coming to an end. Now, we're already looking forward to 2024. Myself and my videographer, Max, have been discussing content for next year in terms of different gun reviews. Obviously, we love doing the reviews, and this is what we've hopefully become famous for already. But on a side note, we would like to ask you, the viewers at home, in your armchairs, in your studies, in your man caves, what do you want to see next year? What kind of content in terms of topics would you like us to talk about? Put it in the comments below. Tell us what it is, regardless of, you know, whether you think it's a bit silly. Is it I'm talking about gun fit? Talking about, you know, what kind of recoil pads I might recommend? Guns for ladies, steel shot, chokes. There's no end of stuff. You know, what's your favorite Power Ranger? What's your favorite Christmas tipple? Just tell us and we will do our absolute best to bring it to you during 2024. Right, let's move on to today's review. Now, amazingly this is the first time that we have looked at either a beretta dt10 or a dt11 on the eastfield gunroom youtube channel what's even more crazy is the fact that i've shot a dt11 for six years and like i said this is the first time we've looked at one are we going to bring you a bog standard dt11 no are we going to bring you something that's a bit special absolutely so today we are going to look at the beretta dt11 gold as with all the videos, whether you like it or not, you can get a bit of history. So the DT-11 replaced the DT-10. It was launched back in 2012. And it kind of, it was radically different to the DT-10. If you've picked up an early DT-11, you will know what I mean. It was heavier, it was chunkier, it was bigger in the palm as well. And to be fair, it didn't get a particularly good press from a lot of people who were fans of the DT-10 because it was so different. Fast forward 11 years, this is now the most successful competition shotgun the world has ever seen. This has won more medals, more titles than any other shotgun. It is superb. I, Despite my love for older guns, Brownies, Marukis, Winchesters, I am a huge fan of the DT-11 and I always will be. And this one is something else. So let's just clarify what DT stands for because I've mentioned the DT-10 and the DT-11. It simply means detachable trigger. Now, if you watch the Gamba video, which was a long time ago now, the Gamba Daytona we reviewed had a detachable trigger, and the whole purpose of a detachable trigger from a competition shooter's point of view is it's easy maintenance. Um, there's a safety aspect if you're shooting and going all over the world, you can take the trigger out, and also you don't need to carry a spare gun around when you are competing all over the world and shooting a lot of cartridges. So DT, detachable trigger. We'll look at a DT-10 in a, another video, I'm sure, but for now, we'll focus on the DT-11. Now, the DT-11 Gold is a limited edition gun, and it was initially going to be launched to celebrate, to commemorate, the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Now, Beretta's initial idea, again a bit of history, was to use some kind of symbol of Tokyo on this gun. However, that made people in Tokyo not very happy and they said they couldn't do it. So what it ended up being called is a uh, DT-11 Gold, and where they were gonna put, to show you on the action here, some kind of reference to Tokyo, it ended up with the word Gold on top of the action just by the locking bolt. And that is a little bit of history behind the gun itself. Now, this was produced in limited numbers worldwide. There was, I believe, 400 guns in total, which included 200 sporters, 125 trap guns, and 75 skeet guns. However, I've recently learned that there was 750 produced, and I'll tell you for why. With every DT-11 gold that was produced, the index of the serial number denoted what discipline the gun was designed for. So you had SK for skeet, you had T for trap, and you had S for sporting, which was the 32-inch sporter, we also had C, which Beretta's um, interpretation of was for compact sporting, which was a shorter barrel, which was a 30-inch sporter. So if you look at the serial number here, we have got GLD for gold, 125 because it's number 125, and S for sporting, which denotes this is a 32-inch gun. So the DT-11, when it was launched, was produced with a 3mm wider action than the DT-10. And the whole idea behind that, I believe, was to enhance the balance of the gun and to enhance the, enhance the feel of the gun. 
Now, as with the DT10, you've got this extremely positive Kirsten bolt, locking bolt action design. So as well as the hinge pins here, which of course the barrels lock into the action via, you've also got the added security of this great big bolt that goes along the top of the action. And that is because these guns are designed to be used by athletes, people who shoot in excess of, in quite often cases, a million shells a year plus. People like Vincent Hancock, who's an Olympic gold medalist, Olympic skeet shooter, there's a mouthful. He shoots, I think it's something like 500 shells a day. He has got a shooting layout where he lives, so obviously that helps, but he shoots an awful lot of cartridges. People who shoot at this level for Olympic trap, Olympic ski, do an awful lot of training, and they need a gun that's extremely solid and extremely, most important, reliable. So that's the design, the whole idea behind the design of the Kirsten Bolt. The history of that was from the SO series of guns, which again, we'll save for another day when we look at an SO. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to just put the gun back together and I'm going to take the trigger out and show you how to do that. If you've got a DT10 or a DT11, then this is probably useful information. So what we do is we push the safety catch, we push it again, the gun makes a click, push the top lever across to 90 degrees, and then the trigger will just literally drop out. How cool is that? And inside here, as I've said, you've got all the bits and pieces which... Again, like I talk about in the Gamba video, um, if anything were to go wrong with the shotgun, which you would hope it wouldn't do, at any kind of competition level, everything is in there. So all you do as an athlete, a competitor, you carry a spare trigger group round and you just whack it in the gun. Now, cosmetically, this is a little bit similar to the 694 Beretta, which again, we've done a video on, check it out. And it's got this kind of Nistan coating on the action, which is like a, a matte finish, silvery, yeah, okay. Now, in addition, we've got these polished shoulders. And the idea with that is the shoulders of a gun, when people carry them or have an action of a gun, um, they do tend to wear. And you just, you know, with it being a high usage area, having them chrome, A, it looks really smart, and B, it makes them more susceptible to long term, long periods of rubbing, shall we say. So there you've got that. It's got this down coating with the chrome. And whereas with the traditional DT11, we've got these decals with DT11 and this line in Bretta Azuri blue on the gold. Naturally, it's gold. And on the underside, we've got number 125 of 200. Now, like I said, this is 200, not sporters in total, but 232 inch sporters. So if you've got one of these, there's another 199 people in the world that have got the same gun, obviously with a different number. So we'll pop the trigger back in which is basically the easiest way to do it is to reverse exactly what you've done because otherwise you can have all sorts of problems. So barrel wise, now I'm a big fan of the DT11 and the reason I like the DT11 is because it's extremely smooth to shoot. I have shot a lot of competition shotguns in my time and I've never shot one quite as smooth as this and that is down to the, the Stelium Pro barrel construction. What you've got is you've got steelium. Steelium is a tri-alloy metal, and it's produced in the same way that all Bretta barrels are produced, which is cold hammer forging, which gives them extreme strength. Uh, on top of that, you have got 480 mil forcing cones. So in terms of comfort and ballistics, you will, I don't believe, find a smoother shooting competition shotgun. That in itself gives you 120 millimeters extra in terms of the length of the forcing cone, over the 694. If you watch the 694 video, the Bretta 694, you remember that I referred to, as some people do, as a little bit of a baby DT11. However, in terms of the shooting characteristics, they are completely different shotguns, hence the fact that one costs twice as much as the other. Just a bull trigger, as you would expect, and it's slightly different to the 694 because what you've got is you've got the little rail here and there's actually a ball bearing inside. So just be careful when, if you've got one of these guns, when you're adjusting the trigger, because you can lose the ball bearing during the adjustment process. One thing I really like about the DT11 is this great big positive selector here. You know, it's really, really chunky. It just feels solid when you push it forward. I don't know whether Beretta put these thicker lines on the selector because I know people in the past who have shot Beretta who accidentally selected the other barrel when they pulled the trigger or when they put the hand on the stock. Not too sure, but it just feels, the whole thing feels so, so positive. You've got this great big fat top lever as well, which again, they've tried to sort of um, mimic a little bit in the 694, but it, 
it's not the same gun. Any one of the towers, your 694 and a DT11 are similar. They just ain't similar at all. This gun weighs eight pound 15 ounces. So with it being a sporting 32 inch gun, you know, people who are used to shooting the likes of maybe Krieg offs or heavier Paratzes, it's going to appeal to them. It, it, but because of that, because of the added weight, because of the barrel construction configuration, they are just so, so smooth to shoot. 10 by 8 file cut rib as standard ventilated rib. Obviously, we've talked about the Stelium Pro. This is the only gun in the Beretta range that features the Stelium Pro. Everything else is Stelium or Stelium Plus. And you've got this quite natty little, smart, natty little graphics on the barrels here that say it. Optima HP chokes are standard. Again, although this is an out and out competition gun, I do know people that shoot game with these. You know, you can buy a scroll engraved L, which is a luxury. You can buy a DT11 double E double L, which has got a side plate. And it is a crossover gun, particularly if you want to shoot extreme pheasants. I'm talking really big, heavy cartridge. But it comes down to the fact that it's so smooth to shoot and that it handles so well, because that is ultimately what you're paying for and why this gun is so successful, so, so successful worldwide. Optima HP chokes with this particular one, um, they are the colored bands. Again, if you've got a Beretta and you've got Optima standard factory chokes and you will know that how good they are out the box, not every manufacturer gets it right when they produce a choke tube, but we're talking about a company that's the oldest manufacturing company in the world. So if you can't get a choke tube right now, then we're all in the cart, aren't we? Okay. So this one, 32 inch, like I said, if you've got a 30 inch one or you're looking for a 30 inch one, you will have the different serial number. You will have the C for compact sporting rather than the S. Um, the trigger guard is the same Nistan coated finish on the gold as it is on the standard gun with the blue action. Then we move on to the woodwork. This is class three, um, nicely figured European walnut. Now, what's interesting is with the original DT11, it was big, it was heavy, it was chunky, it was too big. The palm swell was enormous. You had to have a serious pair of mitts to be able to use one of those guns. What Beretta have done is as the DT11 has evolved, they've gone more back to the kind of DT10 kind of style, kind of feel. And the current version is a minimal palm swell, but it still feels nice in the hand, nice grip radius. And yes, like I said, I do shoot one of these. It just, they've got it dead right. Standard amount of cast for a right-handed shoot on a particular gun, which is usually four mil and eight mil. And alongside the wood, which is nicely figured straight grain, which is what you want your competition shotgun because we're looking at strength, we're looking at low recoil. Um, it's finished off with an 18 mil microcore recoil pad. Stock dimensions as standard is 35 mil drop at comb and 55 mil drop at heel, which is a little bit higher than if you go back to a DT10, for example, from you know, 2004, 5, 6, 8, 10, whatever, because they were 36, 56. Microcore pad, standard 18 mil, will give you 14 and 5 eighths. Again, with all modern Berettas, the Microcore pad is available in different lengths and thicknesses, so you can play around with it accordingly. Now, despite the fact that this gun is eight pound 15 ounces, it absolutely balances, as you would expect, on the hinge pin, look at that. It just feels lovely. Now the forend design is interesting because the DT11 is available in three different forend designs. You can have a Schnabel, you can have a Beaver Tail, or you can have a London. Now this is the London or rounded forend, and this comes as standard uh, on the DT11 Gold, but also on most DT11 guns, especially here in the UK. So why is this gun so successful worldwide? I think it just comes down to the fact that because of the pedigree behind it, the ASE, the DT10, you know, Beretta have played and played and played around with this gun for generations. They've had the input from the international shooting teams because ultimately, if you want to produce a world-beating competition shotgun, you have to listen to the people that use it. It's not just a marketing exercise. You give it to the people and they come back with the feedback and they say, can you change this? Can you change the other? And Yes, I concede the fact that most people who shoot these at a competition level will probably have custom fitted woodwork, but that doesn't change the mechanics and the um, 
platform of the shotgun in general. So like I said, they made 400 of these across the sporting compact line, 125 trap guns and 75 skeet guns. Skeet guns were 28 inch as you would expect because they're Olympic skeet and the trap guns were all, as I believe, 30 inch barrels. Now, what Beretta are very good at doing is they are extremely good at putting together a nice package. This gun is no different. Uh, when I first saw this case, I thought, oh my God, I need to wear sunglasses because it is very bright and shiny, okay? So it is the standard DT11 case with a higher shine finish, shall we say, in this kind of slightly gaudy silver. And inside you've got black lining rather than blue lining. So you've got Breta DT11 Gold, the all important stock tool. And as with a lot of modern competition shotguns, you get a, a stock balancing system. And this is no different. This has, I believe, got the full weight set, full complement of weights in it right now, which is why it weighs 8 pounds 15 ounces. Without those, you're probably looking at you know near a sort of eight pound ten. I personally like the fact that it's nice and heavy because again, it will enhance. Well, it will reduce recoil even further, felt recoil even further. One thing I did want to point out is we'll just finish off with the box. Is you get your you get a spares kit which not only involves a screwdriver to move the trigger to adjust the trigger, but with all the DTs, you also get spare firing pins and spare springs. Not dislike its Italian counterpart, Parazzi, Gamba, etc. Spare beads, some Optima HP chokes, some barrel socks, and a bit of genuine Bretta oil and snap caps. And that kind of finishes off the package nicely. Just going back to the gun, a couple of things I want to mention. Um, the quality of the finish of the blue and other barrels, the engine turning, but also the checkering, now the checkering is interesting because my particular DT11 is custom fitted and I've got double point checkering because people who watch the channel will know I'm a fan of double point checkering. But Beretta opted for this more rounded, you know, looks a bit like a buffalo's horn checkering. But I don't dislike it. It's not my favourite. I've got the same on the, on the fore end. But also, historically, with all 10s and 11s, you also get this nice diamond, um, which is cut into the back of the stock just below the selector. So that, for the first time on the channel, which is miraculous, as I say, is the DT11 Gold. Quick summary, it was a limited edition, done for Tokyo Olympics, didn't quite turn out how Beretta wanted it, so it got ended up calling something slightly different than what it's supposed to be called in the first place, it ended up called the DT11 Gold. Limited edition, 750 pieces, I believe, worldwide, because um, I think there was they've finished up being more than the initial allocation. The long and short of it is this gun is the most successful competition shotgun in the world. If you go to Beretta, I've been there many times, they've got a wall of um, wall of winners, if you like, and it's got the people that have won the medals, it's got pictures of them, it tells you which Olympics they competed into. And this gun is so good at winning medals and at competing at the highest level. I don't know how they're gonna replace it. It's been around now for, like I said, 10 years-ish, um, 10, 11 years. I would imagine, hopefully, it's going to be around for a lot, lot longer. Having said that, if Beretta can better it, I can't wait to see what they come up with. So that's been the DT11 Gold Limited Edition 32-inch Sporter. Please don't forget what we talked about at the start regarding what content you want to see moving forward for next year. Put it in the comments. Let us know what it is. If you think it's stupid, we'll probably do it anyway, regardless. Comment below about this particular gun or any other DT11. I've got a big knowledge of DT11s. I'm sure I'll be able to help you. If anybody wants any more advice about how to take the trigger in and out, feel free to get in touch. Don't forget to check out the website. Contact me directly and keep liking and subscribing the channel. And we'll see you again next time on the Eastfield Gunner YouTube channel.